Greetings friends and welcome to another video with Ilva the Red. Today's topic is null binding. What is it and where did it come from? While the term null binding is apparently relatively modern, allegedly being coined in the 1970s, the craft itself has been around for thousands of years. Null binding is a method of garment construction in the same vein as knitting. Unlike knitting, however, Null binding isn't worked from a ball of yarn in one continuous length, but is instead worked from shorter lengths of yarn joined end to end as the pieces progress. The key reason for this difference is that null binding is worked using a single needle, similar to a tapestry needle. Historically, these needles were made from wood, bone or antler. I personally use a bone needle. If you're keen to try null binding, your local craft store should have a large blunt tapestry needle made of metal, which is a good alternative. So that's the what is it portion out of the way. Now let's talk about where did it come from. To be quite honest, it's actually quite hard to say for sure where it started. What we do know is where the oldest existing examples were found. The two oldest samples were fragments found in Israel and Denmark, dated to circa 6500 BCE and 4200 BCE, respectively. But, I hear you say, those are just fragments, they don't mean much on their own. Well, maybe not, so let's look at garments then. Even if we look at garments rather than fragments, null binding still predates what we know of as knitting by several hundred years. There's hats and shawls from Peru dated from 300 BCE to 300 CE. There's the tarim basin hat in China dated to circa 1000 BCE. And one of the most well-known null binded garments, the coloured sandal socks from Egypt, they are older again, dated at approximately the 4th century BCE. Given that evidence for knitting starts in the Middle Ages, it's certainly easy to see that the craft of null binding predates knitting by many hundreds of years, possibly just thousands of years. So we know approximately when null binding started, thanks to the archaeological evidence, but when did null binding go out of style? While knitting and crochet did indeed become far more popular than their predecessor over the centuries, some areas across Europe maintained the practice of null binding right up until some major changes in the textile industry caused the practice of null binding to almost be lost in the 1950s. There has been a small revival in more recent years, and null binding is a staple craft in the Viking reenactment community. But outside of small craft communities like that, null binding is basically unheard of. Occasionally, an article about Viking knitting surfaces and circulates the internet. Because my non-reenactor friends know I'm interested in historical crafts, these articles are often shared with me, my friends not realising that this is the same craft that I post about on social media. Now, I'm not trying to put down my friends in any way, because I love that they think of me when they see these things, but it does highlight for me just how unknown null binding is today. Hopefully more people take up the craft over time and it's treated with a similar fondness as knitting. It would be sad to see such an ancient craft disappear. But tell me, do you know how to null bind? If you do, tell me what your favourite stitch is in the comments below. My favourite stitch is York Stitch, the one used for the Coppergate sock. If you don't know how to null bind but want to start, have a look at our tutorials. We have a couple of videos you might find useful. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this somewhat helpful. And I look forward to seeing you again in our next video. See you later.